Hey guys, thanks for watching the 2020 season of Basquatch Hunter TV. Now, since this is the season finale, I want to do things a little bit differently. So you're going to see something that's very personal and very close to my heart in this episode. Not only do we catch some amazing fish and we have a really cool surprise at the end of the episode, but I got to do something I've always wanted to do that I've never done before, and that's going fishing with my dad. So stay tuned for a very different kind of episode. I hope you guys enjoy it, and I'll see you guys in 2021. My name is Mike McKinstry. I travel the country with a fishing rod, a kayak, and a camera in search of adventure and one big mythical fish that we call the Basquatch. We fish for any species we can, but we have a huge passion for bass fishing. Along our travels, we look for adventure, exploring, and new ways to catch fish and have as much fun as we possibly can. Not only do we release our fish back to the water, but we also find new and exciting ways to give back to local communities and to pay it forward. So make sure you take care of the water you touch, the fish you catch, and the people you meet. And welcome to Basquatch Hunter TV. My name is Mike McKinstry. I'm the host of Basquatch Hunter TV, and I was born and raised in Detroit, Michigan in 1984. Now, when most people think of Detroit, they think of this. And, and they think of this. They think of rundown buildings, graffiti, and memories of what used to be a beautiful and vibrant city of Detroit, riddled with homelessness, crime, and remnants of the beautiful city that once was. But when I see Detroit, I see this. I see the beautiful artwork. I see the vibrant city. I see a city that's like a blank canvas that just needs a little bit more paint. I also see the hustle and bustle the busy city and the produce markets, the food industry, and all of the beauty that the Detroit Eastern Market has to offer. Now, when I was a kid, I grew up coming down here with my dad, driving the big trucks, going to all the markets, the meat markets, the produce markets, and seeing how everything was made and loading up the trucks and getting them ready to deliver to the beautiful city of Detroit. So let's back up a little bit. My family has been in the food industry for a very long time, since the early 1900s. I've been going down there since I was a really young kid. And I watched the food industry grow and grow and grow. Now my parents started in the food industry in the early 80s and worked their way up to taking over the business in 1992. My grandfather started a restaurant that burned down, unfortunately, in the mid-1960s. It was a Detroit favorite with great food, great ice cream, and great prices. Fast forward to 1968, he started the wholesale food business. My dad took over that business in the 90s when I was still pretty young. But he always had plenty of time to play with me and my sister and give us a great childhood. Growing up, I always knew that my dad was the strongest man alive. And I also knew that he was the hardest working person I have ever seen. I credit most of my work ethic to watching him as a child and as an adult and seeing how hard he still works to this very day. I started working here in 1981, loading trucks and delivering. In 1992, we bought the company and we had three trucks on the road. And, uh, close to 100 restaurants that we delivered to a week. So what was your day like when you came here, like in the 80s? At Coming at 6 in the morning, start unloading semis, put away stock, then load our trucks and go out and make deliveries. And then what time would you get back? We'd take the trucks home. I got home about 10 or 11 o'clock at night. No, I've, always, have... I've always liked dealing with people. Deal with a lot of different people. And, meet different people every day. Different every day, I guess, so. 
you know, it's not repetitive. Different people, different places, and different food. I think I'm gonna do this until I'm about 95 and I'll be shot by a jealous husband. <laughs> That's on record, so that happened. People just did that. <laughs> 95. God, it's a good thought, isn't it? But unfortunately, amid this terrible global pandemic in 2020, I had to see the strongest man alive, the man that I've always looked up to as being one of the toughest people on this planet. I had to see him get very sick. He ended up finding out that he had multiple blood clots in his lungs that they had to remove immediately. Now, this was one of the most sobering moments in my entire family. We had to realize that my dad was getting older and that he may not be around forever anymore. So I took this as an opportunity and I turned this into a positive and I had to think about what are the things that I've never done with my dad that I really want to do. And surprisingly, the one thing that I've never done with my dad that I've always wanted to do was take him bass fishing. I know it's a big shocker, but we've never gone fishing together. It's one memory we've never had together. Not a bad fish, just a little guy. You know what? I decided once he got out of the hospital and once he healed up and he was back being the toughest man that I know, I want to take him on the water, get him on some fish, and show him why I love the sport of fishing. Stay tuned for another adventure from Basquatch Hunter TV. This is why I love this Go Rack right here from Raximus Outdoors. You can put your rods in it at home, carry it in your truck, throw it in there really easily, and then take it right to the lake with you. This is Mike McKinstry with Basquatch Hunter TV, and I'm here with my dad, and we are going fishing today, and we're gonna do something we've never done before, which is one, fish for bass together, two, I'm gonna go fish in a pontoon, which I've never done before. And three, I'm gonna get my dad over here on his first bass squash, which is gonna be a really nice bass on this lake. So are you excited about this? Very excited. Have you caught a bass before at all? Like when you were younger? Yeah, when I was younger I did. Okay, well, have you caught a really big bass yet? No, not, not yet? No. Okay, well, it's gonna happen today, I hope. So let's go hit the water, get the boat out, and hopefully let's get this guy in a really big fish. So let's go. Let's do this. It's our first time bass fishing together. Be fun. Yeah. Should be. I'll let you catch the big one. Yeah. I'll let you get the big one. Basquatch Hunter TV is brought to you by FX Custom Rods. Quality, precision, performance. Feel free kayaks. Three Waters Kayaks. Raximus Outdoors, a revolution in rod storage. Yak Gear, your rules. Railblazer, hold everything. So we'll go to the front of that island. Right over? Yeah, the front of it, like the side of it because the wind's blowing that way now. And there yeah. should be some really good fish staging up right there. In theory, the fish should be there waiting for us. In reality, they might not be there. If I was a fish and I knew I was coming, I'd wait for me. Yeah, I would too. That's why I always tell them when I release them safely, I'm like, tell your friends. Let them know that we were merciful. That's what the fish call me out here, actually, is Mike the Merciful. I don't know if you've ever heard that or not out here, but the fish talk. The ones that I've caught that you caught, I heard different out of them. Usually there's two really good indicators of fishing. There's birds that will tell you where the bait fish are and the food is, and there's flags that will tell you which way the wind's going. Since I don't see any birds in the water, I'm looking for the flags to see the wind. 
So I just go uh, right where the water color changes from light to dark. So I'll stop there, I'll throw the anchor in and uh, start casting away. Since we're using little finesse baits like this, if we cast them parallel to the drop off like this and it's working really slow on the bottom all the way back to the boat, we should have pretty good luck. There you go, it's a good fish. All right, go ahead and put your thumb on them. It's a nice fish. There you go. There you go. Get your thumb in there. That's a good fish. Here, hold them up. Let's see them. Yeah, it's a fun fight, huh? There we go. Here, bring it over here. I'll help you land them. There you go. Oh, hold on. Let me get the bait out because it's right about to fall out. There you go. There you go, Dad. Oh, yeah. All right, show the show them. Show that thing off. Look at that. Nice fish, Dad. Nice. Going back in. Yeah. Awesome job. Yeah. Got some fish slime on my hands now, at least. Got rid of it. Was that a good fight? That was beautiful. You didn't even make any noise. You're like, oh, yep, I got a fish. It's like <laughs> it's another day. Like, oh yeah, I've done this before. It's just I got another fish. <laughs> that was a good fish, Dad. Nice. You fought him good, too. A lot of people overpower it or muscle him in and rip the hook out. That was a good job. I want to drift the line right here. I just want to be able to get close enough where we can cast into this drop-off. See the, the water color change right, right there? Yeah. If we can get close enough where we can cast right to that drop-off and just pull the bait down towards us, then that should be good. Here we go. Fish on. Here we go. I knew there was a fish over here. Oh, he's dancing. He's dancing. Let's see if he doesn't spit it out. Oh, he's dancing. Oh, he's pulling some drag on me. Oh, he is an angry, angry little guy. Oh, nice fish. Man, that's a nice large mouth. He took that, uh... Put it down in there. Yep. Can you, uh open that binder and the top, like it's got two snaps. There's a pair of pliers, blue pliers, sitting right in the middle somewhere. In the middle. There we go. All right. Keep going back. All right, we got a nice large mouth right here. Hit that net rig right about 12 foot of water. That's what we're aiming for right now and uh, hit it pretty hard, gave us a good fight. So we'll let him go and let him grow and uh, hopefully find his big brother out here. Not a bad fish though. Just how it works in the fishing world. If you don't get a selfie, it doesn't count. Oh, look, I'm in here too. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Make sure you let it, let it fight, let it fight. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Hold him tight. Hold him tight. He's a kicker. Look at that. Hold him up. What do you think? That's a good bass, Dad. <laughs> Here, let me get from this angle. That's awesome. That's it. That is a beautiful bass.
So right now I'm using a seven foot medium heavy fast rod from FX Custom Rods. And I'm using this rod with a 15th ounce jig head from Z-Man Fishing Products. And I'm using this one with that setup because I like the extra backbone. I like the castability of a longer rod, but it's still super sensitive. These FX rods are incredibly sensitive. So I can feel every little tick on the bottom, every little bite, every little movement this bait makes. And I can actually feel when it hits the bottom. So I know when I'm reaching where I want to reach in the water column. So these FX rods are definitely the way to go when you're using light baits. And I have some bigger rods right here too for when I'm using heavier baits from FX rods. You always wave and be nice, but. So you never went fishing with your dad at all? No. Did you, who'd you fish with when you were a kid? Did your grandpa fish? Fish friends, no. Oh, I'm friendly. So it's kind of like full circle that me and you really never fished together. And now we're fishing together. It's kind of like full circle because you didn't get to fish with your dad. Do you find fishing more relaxing and more frustrating? Relaxing. Everyone's different. Some people think it's frustrating because they're frustrated trying to catch fish. And some people find it relaxing because they don't care if they catch fish. And it's just like the almost like the, the mundane act of just casting and just letting it sit. I like to fish after I eat, that way I'm not hungry. <laughs> if, you're hung yeah, if you're hungry and you're not catching fish, I guess that's a bad thing. It makes it worse. Get an attitude then. I don't spend a whole lot of time being hungry though. Well, you don't spend a whole lot of time fishing either. <laughs> True. Okay, fish out. Oh, I just lost it because I couldn't set the hook. <laughs> oh, it's a good start. I went to set the hook and my rods were in the way. I ran out of room. There he is. All right, I'm getting angry. I'm not gonna do much good. I'm gonna jump in after him in a second here. That's twice. There's Pretty a fish over there. That. Put it in, we'll, we'll head in. There you go. Keeps it nice and secure. That was a lot of fun, Dad. It was. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, I'm glad we got to do this. We should have been doing this the whole time. Especially you get to drive me around the pontoon. Successful day on the water. It's not about the fish you release, but it's about the memories you get to keep. But we have to do both today. We have to catch fish, release them, and make memories. Yeah. So it's kind of like a win times three. So thank you very much. Thank you. Great time. Want to get the cooler? Or you got it? Got it. Okay. Man, that was a good time. Yeah, we can hold up. Gonna work out. Well, it's work a good time on the water. Great time, a lot of fun. All right, so we just finished up our day of fishing, had an incredible time. We caught some fish, we released some fish, and we caught some good memories, so it's kind of fun. You yes. caught a good fish. I think you got the bigger fish of the day. No, I think yours was bigger. Oh, so nice of just you. Just a little. Yes, it was bigger, it's fine. Uh, caught two largemouth bass, three largemouth bass, caught some good fish out there. They weren't really hitting for us on the drop-offs though, but back in the bay over here in the shallow water, they were back on. Well, like a lot you said, of... we should have started out here. Yeah, well, mm -hmm. sometimes I find the fish, sometimes I don't, so I can't say I'm always right with it because I'm not, but either way, thank you very much. I really thank appreciate you. it, Dad. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks for inviting me. Let's do it more often. Gotta be invited. Keep that line to the water. <laughs> we'll be right back. 
This is Mike McKinstry from Basquatch Hunter TV, and today we are at Volunteers of America with the Veterans Housing um, Association for Detroit. Now, this place is a really cool organization. What they do is they take in veterans that need assistance or need housing, and or homeless or hungry, and they bring them in here and they provide housing for up to 60 veterans at a time. They feed veterans, they provide meals seven days a week, and they also help give them a good jump start so they don't have to recycle through the program and they become self-sufficient on their own. They help them with affordable housing afterwards, and they have a really good program here. So what we did is we got some food together. We got about 80 pounds of chicken, which is about 200 pieces of chicken. We got, uh, I think we have 12 cans of green beans, like the big one gallon cans and corn, a bunch of great stuff to drop off here. We're gonna go meet with the kitchen manager and the, um, one of the cooks here who's also a veteran. And we're gonna hopefully put some smiles on people's faces and help them feed as many people as possible. So it's gonna be a lot of fun dropping off some food today, some people in need. Uh, what do you think we should donate? What do we, what do you have that's good? Mm. Okay, some corn, some All right, well, let's grab uh, some canned goods here. And we'll load them up. Uh, grab two cases of each. Here, you wanna wheel it out? <laughs> I'll do the work. That must be good. This will help a lot of people too. Yeah, that's, that's true. All right, let's get his loaded up in the van. All right, so we're gonna grab some kind of protein to donate. What are you thinking? Like chicken, steak, probably chicken? All right, let's grab a case of chicken here. Hey look, it's chicken right here. All right, what do we got, like 80 pounds here? All right, that'll be good. That'll help a lot of people at least. Yeah. Oh, oh, we got 80 pounds of chicken for sure. All right. This will help out a lot of people too. Thank you very much. This will probably feed like 200 people. Hopefully. All right, so we're gonna get in the van here and go deliver some food to people in need and I really hope this goes well. It's gonna be a great time and hopefully put some smiles on some people's faces. So let's go. All right, so I'm here with Brian, the kitchen manager um, for the organization. I'm also here with Tommy, who is a veteran and also one of the amazing cooks that helps out here too. So we're gonna get all the food out, get the donations ready, and get them all in uh, the refrigerator in there. All right, you guys ready? Ready. All right. Yep. I was gonna do the smaller cans, but I figured this would be oh, easier to, for cooking. Easier for us, easier for and then we got 80 pounds of chicken. <sighs> That's a heavy one, so oh, hey. that should help a whole lot of people and uh, hopefully feed a lot of people too. Thank so you be very good. Much. No problem. Thank you for really your service too. It. Yeah, of course. So all right, let's get this in real quick. And get it out of the heat. There you go. Open the door for you. Very much. Oh, no problem at all. Thank you guys. Yes, sir. So my name is Dawn Revan. I am the director of social services with Volunteers of America, Michigan. We are here at the Detroit Veterans Housing Program which is in the Milwaukee Junction. Um, it's our transitional housing facility for our homeless veterans. And what kind of services do you guys do? Like, let's say a veteran goes to the VA and says they need help, they're homeless, they need assistance, um, and then they come to you guys. Like, where, what is the process? Like, do they, they eat here? Do you have, you have housing here? Right. No, so it's a transitional housing facility, so there is housing here. They can be housed for up to two years, but our goal is to get them out in 90 days into some sort of permanent affordable housing situation. Um, we offer case management services. We have groups, we have a commercial kitchen on site. Um, so they eat three meals a day here, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Um, and then we also, before COVID, before the pandemic, we would have a lot of outings planned for them, but unfortunately because of the pandemic, those have been canceled. Okay. And how many people come in here like monthly or yearly or like, so, like a guesstimate? It's really changed because we've had a lot of different CARES Act funding and federal initiatives, but generally our census is 60. That's the capacity that we can take is 60 veterans at any time. Right now our census is pretty low, we're floating around 30, but on average we serve around 200 to 300 veterans a year. Oh, it's really cool that you guys hop out the veterans in this area too, because yeah, I know it's a it. huge, 
it's a huge problem, especially in the Detroit area, Absolutely. a lot of areas, is that the veterans have no place to go. Right. And when the VA turns them away or the VA doesn't have enough resources, then organizations like yours can like pick up the slack and yeah. help them, not just help them temporarily put a Band-Aid on it, but give them a good head start and get the ball rolling to actually be self-sufficient afterwards. Yeah, that's our goal. Our goal is to help them obtain financial stability so that they won't have uh, homelessness or experience homelessness again in the future. So now, if people wanted to donate or reach out and help out your organization, right. what's the best way to do that? Like, what's the website or how can people sure. help? So we have um, a website. It's www.voami.org for Volunteers of America Michigan. And there's tons of links there. We have a really great uh, fundraising development department. Well, thank you for all you do. I really yeah, appreciate thanks, thanks like, everything coming. you guys do. That's awesome. I'm just glad we're gonna help out with some food for you guys. And... It's all great, we appreciate it. Perfect. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Okay. All right. Perfect. Thank you. Basquatch Hunter TV on the Pursuit Channel. I don't know where they are yet. I make up everything I say as I there say you it. Gotta, you gotta. That part's not gonna be in there, is it? No. I'll start inviting you more. <laughs> <laughs> Does that work? That works. <laughs> All right.